Jack X is a classical style platformer uh, with a few surprises up his sleeve. Uh, but before I say any more, Mike, can you tell us a bit more about your game in your own words? Yeah, so basically, Jack X is a platformer game that um, features the use of the axe and the ability to dash to towards it. So basically, it's, it's very inspired by some other platformer that you can throw and go everywhere towards the open world design of the game. It's very inspired by, by um, Mario Odyssey because when we started the project, uh, I don't have anything to play with. Uh, I, had, I don't have any Switch device to play the game. So I decided to, uh, what if I make my own Mario Odyssey, then decided to develop Jack Axe, then inherit the ability to throw then basically the uh, no, uh, axe ability yeah so can you can you talk a little bit about um about the enemies in the game so um earlier on when i was playing it there were like different sort of bats and uh, i think there were snowmen that were throwing snowballs at you as well um and i got stuck on this boss battle that i kept dying where this i think it was a, a like a big snowman that would sort of smash down on the ice and then he would throw more stuff at you i just could not do it <laughs> Basically, the basic enemies in the game are just like a little obstacle for Jack to overcome. But for which uh, the most in interesting part is the Yeti boss. Because in the first part, I designed it to, for the people to know that um, when the Yeti smashed to the ice, because in the introduction of the boss fight, the Yeti will smash to the ice, then it will get, like, get confused, then you can throw the axe on it. I didn't uh, expect to uh, few people won't get like the hint that you need to you need the boss to hit the ice. So it's very much surprising for me that uh, uh, few people don't like get it in the first time they play it. Mm. And on, on that, I guess I'm just curious, like how do you, as a developer, balance the difficulty where if it's a li you know. If it's too hard, people might not be able to do it. But that's kind of the point: is to be challenging. Like, how do you um, come up with that? I mean, I, I designed the boss based on my um, my skill level. So when I when I can beat the boss, it's pretty much it. So I just launch it. Then this is the boss. Then suddenly, uh, when it came to testing, suddenly a lot of people like get getting beat at um, very difficult. They really ha having a hard time beating the boss, so um, I have to like take their their feedback. Maybe reduce the health of the boss, or maybe reduce the amount of actions they they will have to perform. Yeah, that's that's really interesting. Actually, thinking about that, because I guess it's it would be like Michael and Yevo, like version of the game. It's like when you people get to that level, they know that you're on they're on your skill level essentially, right? Yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, so because the, the axe is such an integral part of the game, did you design it first based off of the movement and then combine the Filipino and Norse mythology um, storyline together for for context? Yeah, so it started with the platformer engine. I started developing the movement, then how how you um, interact with the axe, how you throw the axe. That's where, where I started developing the game. Then um, while we developed the game, we started to um, create inspiration from other, like Norse mythology, then Norse and Filipino mythology, just to create more um, creativity with the theme of the game. What's your favorite mechanic you've created? Uh for Jack Axe? Uh, my favorite mechanic for Jack Axe is basically the Axe, axe mechanic because it's a, it has a lot of interaction in the game. Like you can throw it in the in the enemies and there is like a target, uh, target object where you can throw the Axe then reset your Axe throw again and chain it with other moves. That's very much my, my favorite. But I have also some um, tricks that I I have applied in the game, but it's m more on platforming mechanics, yeah. Could you walk us through a bit of your history as a game developer? Yeah, I started uh, when I'm in college. I started learning about programming because um, 
I'm very much bored of school, so I decided to do a little bit of ex- uh, exploring in game development. I picked up game the de- game maker and started to experiment with uh, with the with the engine. Then, um, pretty much, I had fun with it and I started to make games. My very first game I made was in was an RPG game which is released on Steam as well. It's titled Dungeon Souls. Then after that, um, I, I started developing Jackax. And how does it feel now to have the game out in the open? Yeah, I'm very much relieved because the game took a while. Uh, it's, it's very much... It, it really took a lot with my um, mental health because, you know... Making games, it's, it's very difficult, especially when you're making making it solo. Uh, could you walk us through like a, a typical day for you when you were working on Jackaxe? Because before we mentioned, um, there's a lot of different roles that you have from programming to art and that, you know, how do you balance all of that? What does that look like for you? All I can say is um, Jackaxe is very much um, a learning ground for me especially in game development because when i'm i'm developing a game i don't really have like um to do list of oh i i mean i i have to do this i have to do that um i just make it make something then go on another day i have like no to do list to follow in development yeah you said it was very challenging to develop alone and uh, we we see a lot of uh, solo developers uh, on this show, we talked to a, a lot. Uh, what was one of the most challenging aspects of of uh, Jack X that you're the most proud of, perhaps? The whole game. I mean, I mean the whole game, the whole development of the game, because um, the um, the whole decision making is it's it's all in me. I mean, I have to do all the art style, the programming, then all the mechanics that will be involved in the game. So it's very much difficult. But at least I I I have I have made them I have made them, um, yeah. It's very very happy that I I have, I, have, I have, I'm able to finish the game. Are you going to stay a solo developer, or do you have plans to form a team? Uh, I actually planning on staying solo for now because um, manage, managing a team would be very. I I mean I I I very I I will welcome the a team because it, it it will lessen the burden in terms of development but for now i i, I think i am i will be solo for the meantime yeah. in the future on future projects would you stay with platforming um as as a game genre or would you move to something else i mean the in terms of jack axe i i would love to improve more on the story of the game so i would love to make something like a sequel of the jack axe to tell more of the story of the game yeah, so maybe that's the plan for the future. I'm actually seeing a lot of fan art of uh, of Jack and her friends on on Twitter and uh, and other websites. How's it feel to see all that fan art? I'm very happy to see the fan art because I I seldom uh, have like those awesome looking fan art. I'm very happy to see that. Did you ever think that the game would inspire people to create? No, 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 not at all, <laughs> not at all, because. I don't really expect something like that, like to people like enjoying the game. So I'm very much um, surprised that people uh, make something like un- fun art for the game. Cool. Uh, I think that's all the time that we have for today. So uh, Michael Danievo, thanks so much for being a part of Lightmap and sharing your project with us. Yeah, thank you so much, guys. Ben. It's been a pleasure for me.